Today's lesson is a geometric proof of a parallelogram. Speedy now. Just to summarize our entire lesson, you know? So, this is like an end piece to the lesson. This is like the finale or short little epilogue, you know? Alright, so what are we doing? Well, one, two. First of all, we're going to be seeing how to prove parallelograms. What does that mean? Well, we have to, if we have some sort of polygon, we have to prove if it's a parallelogram. And then how to prove things that are similar to parallelograms. All right, so now, See how, first of all, we can prove parallelograms. So, I'm going to draw a parallelogram real quick right here. Bang. And now, we just put that over there. Fits perfectly. So now, here's our parallelogram. But first of all, before that all, you need to know slope formula and the distance formula. Now the slope formula is pretty easy. So the slope formula, if you have x1, y1 over here, no, or rather x2, y2, and then you have x1, y1, then the, uh, essentially the concept is, well, I gotta demonstrate this better by doing and that's the other way around. But if we have x1, y1, and x2, y2, then essentially the slope is just how much you're traveling in the vertical direction or divided by how much you're traveling in the horizontal direction. So the, how much we're traveling in the horizontal direction would be x2 minus x1. How much we're traveling in the vertical direction would be y2 minus y1. So over x2 minus x1 and carry on top, the slope symbol is m. So now, what about distance formula? Well, it essentially has the same concept. x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. Then we have x2, y2, and x1, y1. However, to make this work this time, have to use the Pythagorean theorem and if we do we realize that if we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared then that would be assuming x2 minus x1 is a so x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared is c squared so now square rooting everything we get c is the square root of x2 minus x1 squared. And remember, c is what we're trying to find since this is the distance. And then x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Hmm. And now the thing is c is d because we are using the, um, c the hypotenuse is going to be distance. So you also need to know the midpoint formula that was covered in a previous video. Bing! All right, so now, how do we find mm. why if something is a parallelogram? Well, first, let's make this less suspicious of being a parallelogram. So now, first thing to watch out for, if, two pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So you can find if they're parallel by looking at their slope. So for example, let's actually so that we have pairs. So for example, these two slopes have to be the same in order for it to be considered a parallelogram. 
along with these. So, there are also them. Uh, there's also two side, uh, two pairs of opposite sides being congruent, which we can use the distance formula for. So, lastly, we can finally look at our diagonals. So, if we have our diagonals over here, then we will find that they are bisected. So these two are so these two are the same amount. These two are the same amount. So if the diagonals bisect each other, and we can find if they do using the midpoint or the distance formula, then we know it's a parallelogram. All right. So now, what about? Number two, how to prove things that are similar to parallelograms. Well, there's obviously squares, rectangles, and rhombi, just like we covered in the last video. So, let's make a in seemingly inconspicuous rhombus, oh no. Being. All right, so now, how do we find if this is a square? How do we find if this is a rectangle? How do we find if this is a rhombus? How, how, how? Well, the rectangle wasn't covered today. It's covered in a later one. And the rhombus actually has a few ways. So first of all, you have to ask, uh, find if adjacent sides are congruent using the distance formula, the holy grail. So, uh, <coughs> second, you can also look to see if your diagonals are perpendicular, which you can use by finding the slopes of the diagonals. Now, perpendicular lines, their slopes are negative reciprocals of each other. So these, so these are actually, so if you are paying attention, you will notice that the slopes of these two are negative reciprocals of each other, negative two and one half. So same thing has to happen for the diagonals for them to be perpendicular. And a square must possess both the characteristics for rhombus and a rectangle, as we've said in the previous video. So we will cover the rectangle's characteristics later, but that's what we're going to do today. Thank you everybody for watching.